Where's the filet -O fish The filet -O fish is slept on. It's a good sandwich. I'm scared. I don't want to touch this. I'm sorry. Oh, you're actually trying to do work. Okay. Bonjour and welcome to Quebec, the land of maple syrup, poutine, and Celine Dion. But we're not here for any of that. We're here to visit Da Vinci Bikes, who've been manufacturing bikes right here in Quebec since 1987. Well, not right here. They do it here, 200 kilometers north of Quebec City in Chicoutimi, which is located in Quebec's Aluminum Valley. It's here where they take raw aluminum and change it into bikes of all shapes and sizes, from big burly freeride machines to urban commuters and everything in between. Most of Da Vinci's bikes are made right here, with a little bit of engineering, a lot of pride, and maybe a little maple syrup in those welds. Let's go take a look and see how it's done. Francis. Jason. Good to meet you. Good to meet you too. Thank you for having me here in Quebec. This is where the magic happens. Exactly. This is where we are manufacturing made in Canada bikes uh, like this one. This is the latest and greatest. And today uh, we're going to show you the, the full process of the manufacturing. Amazing. I want to see everything. Let's do it. We are in the R&D department. This is where new product development starts. So I'm going to introduce you to two gentlemen who's going to explain the, the full process. Okay, some very smart people in this room, I assume. Essentially, we're taking the project from the idea all the way to the production where I lend the whole package to my guy here. Okay, so making things on a computer before making things... Physical. In real life, yeah, exactly, yeah. Okay, I want to learn more. Let's go yeah. see. Yeah. So uh, the goal here is to have the first idea of what the bikes could look like so that we can present that to uh, the board of direction. Right. So these renderings, they're not necessarily built to the exact specifications. It's just sort of a blueprint, as you will, to make the real thing. Exactly. For the next step, will be, which will be the, the technical design mm -hmm. conception, uh, where the real magic happened. And that's just over here, 10 yeah, feet? just behind the corner. Okay, perfect. Let's go take a look at that too. That's where the magic happens. So I uh, present you, Michel. Hello, sir. He's the most experienced, okay. I would say. Uh, so he's employee number two. So he's been there for quite a while now. Number two? Yeah. Look at all they've given you. <laughs> <laughs> Gray walls. Where we really put all the parts together, all the tubes, make sure everything's fit together well. So that's kind of the first step. So we do all the conception. And then once the conception is finished, we switch to the FEA. Mm -hmm. That's where we make sure that the bike is secure. So basically we reproduce the same uh, force that we will put in the laboratory. Uh, so we test it uh, on the computer just to see if there is any like uh, odd spot mm. in the frame. It's like a, it looks like a thermal imaging, like night yeah, vision yeah, type yeah, of exactly. thing. Okay, so that's why we do the like the final modification, just to make sure that the thickness is, is right, uh, the, the tube shape is right, just to make sure that when we'll be put all the big stuff on the bike, nothing's gonna be, nothing's gonna happen. Okay, very cool. So then from here, we get to go into the lab. Head. Yeah, yeah, we'll pass just in the shop, just to show you where the first prototypes are built, and then we go in the shop in the, in the lab. Okay, let's go see it. I want to see these prototypes. Okay, this looks like a very fun room. Well, it is, Jason. In fact, it's our uh, lab testing uh, room. So. Everything we do that you saw in Michel's computer, we validate here. So if the FA is okay, well, we can see it in real time with lab testing. The goal is to try to like accumulate 10 years of fatigue in a couple of days and weeks of testing right here at the Vinci shop. 10 years? Yeah. So every frame goes through this process and spends, what, two to three days in this? Frame? Yeah, some tests are long, like pedaling testing and like other casing testing. <laughs> oh, casing, perfect. Yeah. That's for and me. Like, yeah, those tests are two to three days long and others are like really, really quick impact test and uh, ultimate strength test. So sometimes things obviously do break. Are you looking for them to fail in a particular way? Normally, we got some expectation like we see in the FEA. We see where's the weak spot but we know what's gonna happen. So it's just a matter of see what's all, all it breaks and... Say the frames pass the test, they've done their 10 year time. What happens next? You gotta make the bikes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, next step is manufacturing. So we're gonna head out and see the raw tubings. And well, I'm gonna hand you back to, uh, to Francis. Okay, you guys are clearly busy. You got more sciencey stuff. Yeah, so I'll go see Francis. It's right out the door. Okay. <laughs> all right, what do we have here? Looks like tubes. 
These are raw tubes and uh, really the manufacturing process starts with those tubes. Uh, for example, here we have um, aluminum extrusions that are used for more simple shapes with process like bending and those uh, tubes are sourced in Quebec. So these are going to end up as bicycles? Yeah, they do the full process and you're gonna see later they are gonna make a full bicycle. For Da Vinci, our goal is really to specialize in the third transformation, which you're gonna see today with the, the tube sizing, the E-treatment, the welding and everything. Yeah, well these, they look great, but I would like to see them become a bicycle. So where do we have to go to see that? Next step is gonna be the tube sizing. Perfect, let's go. So they're speaking a language that I do not understand and can't quite comprehend. However, uh, I think they're talking about the lunch order for later today. All right, this is a, uh, a large gray box. It is. I'm sure it's much more than that though. It's more than the gray box. <laughs> it's expensive. We're, we're here at the, the tube sizing where um, we're gonna use CNC machines or laser cut machine. The reason why we're transferring more and more to the laser cut machine is to be able to work in a one piece flow rather than in batch production. After roughly five minute cycle, we're gonna have a complete kit ready for the welding. We're talking about five times uh, the speed of a CNC machines. Wow, okay. So is this the future? This seems like, I've never seen this in a bike factory before. That was made custom for us. Custom so for, for us, it is uh, part of our future and really at the center of, uh, of the, the production cycle time because it gives a good pace so it's easier to plan for the next steps. You can chug uh, some, some beer. Oh, that's for the Christmas party. Exactly. <laughs> wow, Francis, this looks like another very fancy machine. Another one, indeed. And one thing that is important for having a good welding result is the jigs. So okay. all the jigs are designed by our um, manufacturing engineering team, okay. supported by our R&D team. So the mindset of a jig is to be as precise as possible because it's gonna have a big impact on your welding results and consistency, right? So here's the jig yes. and this is uh, designed internally but as well as manufactured. Internally. So you made it here? Yeah. So you controlled the whole part of the process? The whole part. Okay, awesome. Exactly. And there's going to be other jigs for other models. So really here, coming from the um, sizing, you're going to have all your tubes ready that you're going to place here. And the goal is to respect the geometry specification. The first step, once everything is held tight, is going to do what we call tack welds. And this is just to hold the frame together. And then what's important, like I said, is, is eye precision where we're gonna use uh, filler gauge to make sure every gaps are constant. Then you're gonna have the full welds in a strategic sequence uh, that you need to respect uh, in order to have less uh, internal stress uh, and distortion coming from the welding. It's, it's about uh, four times faster than uh, the TIG manual welding. How many humans do you have here welding right now? In between uh, 10 to 15. Oh, wow, okay. Et voila, c'est magnifique. Next step. Well, you don't know yet, but I think we're gonna have a pretty big demand for the East Spartan. Okay. We're gonna have to increase capacity. Okay. So, we think you could be a good welder for us. Oh, so this is your first step to, to pass if you want to weld for us. Put me in, coach. Okay. I've never done this before. I'm trying to get the, oh, that one. Yep. <laughs> That'll hold. Clearly an expert and uh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Let's go to the next thing. <laughs> All right, so the frames have been welded and then they come to this two-story unit. What's happening here? 
This is a, an essential part of the process that we call heat treatment. Okay. So during the welding, uh, it's going to create internal stresses and distortion on the bike. So what we're going to do is uh, go in the oven um, to relieve those stresses. After the oven, then you're going to plunge in a liquid called quench, basically water and uh, oil. Okay. And that's going to bring the frame to what we call a T0 state where uh, the frame is annealing or soft, if you will. Oh. And we're gonna uh, take that window period to do the alignment uh, since it's, it's soft. So it's a bit malleable, you can shape it a little, a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right, what do we have here? So here we have the alignment. Okay. So basically what we are going to do here is make sure the frame comes comes back to the perfect geometry specification. We need to do this because we need the perfect alignment uh, for the assembly, right? Yeah. So in that process where uh, we are at T0 state, the frame, um, like we explained, is more uh, malleable. And after this, this process is done, then we're gonna go in what we call artificial aging. So it's another heat treatment to bring back the mechanical properties of the alloy for the strength and the hardness. So here we are, this is uh, the oven for the second heat treatment called artificial aging. And after this, then we're gonna be ready to go at uh, the paint shop for painting. Oh, awesome. I'd love to see some frames get painted. Let's go there. So we're here to review the full process of the powder coating. And I think we should start with surface preparation. This is uh, really the first step, which is surface preparation. For painting, I would say this is a critical step for uh, having a good adhesion, which is gonna provide a good durability over time. Yeah, you're basically cleaning your canvas to apply your paint. Exactly. These are the uh, electrostatic spray gun and what they, they really do is they're going to put a negative charge to the powder which is going to stick to the grounded frame. So why powder coating? Powder coating is a dry paint, if you will, made of resin pigments and uh, some additives and the, the paint is super durable and it's, I would say it's a more eco-friendly solution as compared to uh, liquid painting. Just because there's less chemicals in there that'll end up back in the environment. Exactly. Okay. So this is why with our strict rules in Canada, um, we do use powder coating. All right, another really hot room. This is for the curing called polymerization. Frame is gonna be in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. It's gonna be at temperatures in between 350 to 400 Fahrenheit. And the goal really is that the powder is gonna melt and is gonna cross link to make sure it's super durable. Front to back, this whole process, how long does it take to paint a frame? The whole thing is about 50 minutes. And then once it comes out of here, it's done. It's done. The next step is gonna be the machining. Machining? Then the assembly. Right, okay, can we go see the machining? Yes. Okay, perfect. So we have a freshly painted frame, and now you're gonna put it into a very scary looking machine. And the scary machine is to do the final machining. And uh, as you can see, we're gonna do machining of the bearings, the pivot points, and every uh, contact surfaces, right? So when you say machining, you're talking about finishing the surfaces so that you know when you put a bearing in it, it can sit properly and not crooked. The important uh, point here is we need to be extremely precise in order to have a clean finish and a uh, perfect fit. So our machines are equipped with what we call a probe. Uh, this probe is to uh, make sure we have quality control on key elements. Uh, for example, 
knowing the pivot points are exactly positioned. So the machine adapts and centered uh, itself in order to have the, the perfect machining. And we figure out that uh, doing it after paint was pretty important. It's a, it's, it's a good way of, of doing it to have uh, finish like you can see here. So how many frames can this unit churn out? This frame specifically is gonna take about 10 to 12 minutes oh, to complete all the pivot points, the bearings and uh, the contact surfaces. This is the place where we're gonna take some measurements uh, to make, make sure that uh, the frame uh, or ensure it meets the perfect geometry specification. We're gonna use a marble that is uh, perfectly leveled. These measurements really are to make sure uh, it's gonna be perfect for the fit when we assemble and that the, uh, it, is conforms, uh, it conforms with the geometry. And uh, one, uh, it's uh, perfectly aligned then it's ready to have the green light for assembly. Which is just over there. Just over there. Okay, I wanna go take a look at that. It looks okay. crazy. So, the assembly line. The assembly line. So, the first steps is gonna be to press the bearings and the cups, and then the main frame is gonna be the first step. Okay. What we're usually gonna do is, depending on the, the peak period and the models, we're gonna have different strategy uh, on the assembly line. For example, sometime we're gonna do some uh, sub-assembly, so pre-assembling some modules uh, into like fish bones for the line uh, to complete every steps. The sub-assemble are gonna be for, let's say, cockpit um, and stuff like that. And this line is uh, mechanized, so it moves. So the operators has a certain time to complete the operation. Oh my god, it's stressful. We have cross-trained uh, people for more flexibility and we also have all our tools calibrated for torque verification and you know at the end you start with the frame, put all the, the uh, sub-assembly and then at the end after packaging or before let's say you have a complete bike. There it is. Ready to ride. Which there's some trails nearby. There is. Can we go ride this bike on those? We should, definitely. Okay, let's do it. Oh my God. Well, there you have it, the process of making a bike from raw aluminum to being ridden out here on the trails. Keeping manufacturing local isn't easy, but it's clear that DaVinci are committed to every step of the process and that passion shines through. Now, it's time for a few more laps. I gotta work off that poutine. Francis, sorry for waiting, let's go.